Everybody else ready? Yeah, we're ready. Let's call the meeting to order. Please rise. Pledge the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you please call the roll? Commissioner Orquine. Yes. Commissioner Lyons. You Commissioner say Lyons. Lyons. Here. Vice Mayor Stanley. Here. Mayor Morgan. Here. Also let it be known in attendance as Town Manager Dunham, Assistant Town Attorney Nazaro, Chief Jones, Acting CFO Mark Bymaster, and myself. Thank you very much. We've had the minutes from our last meeting presented to us. Are there any uh, comments, changes, corrections, additions? If not, is there a motion to approve? A uh, motion to approve the minutes from last meeting. Second. Renee? Commissioner Orkline? Yes. Commissioner Lyons? Yes. Vice Mayor Stanley? Yes. Mayor Morgan? Yes. Um, Mr. Dunham, any, uh, or excuse me, any changes or additions? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, just changes in the arrangement. Uh, uh, we're going to move 10, item 10A to uh, item 9A3. And then uh, we're going to move the bid consideration, which is 10B uh, to the end. But since 10B, uh, 10B was moved up to 10A, it's not gonna be 10C <laughs> if you follow that. Um, you wanna put a 10C, right? Yeah, and so the appointment of new, the new it's commissioner a. would be uh, a correct and the ordinance would be b okay got it thank you very much uh, our next uh, meeting is january 12th at 9 a.m for anyone who wishes to attend public comment anyone wish to speak if not let's move forward with the meeting uh anyone who's going to speak today on any application brought to us please stand and be sworn any ex parte communications by commission members? Nope. If not, we have an application for uh, lot number four at Blue Water Cove. Thank you. Good morning, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. Happy holidays to all of you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Kerry Glickstein on behalf of Blue Water Cove. Uh, with me today is my partner, Paul Corshane, uh, Louis Rivera with Affinity Architecture, and Louis Velajos of Majestic Views, the landscape architect. Uh, we have three applications here today, uh, both of which have uh, gone through two rounds at the ARPB. Um, uh, we have worked with staff quite a bit on the challenge to differentiate all the homes within a 14 home subdivision community that's going up at more or less the same time. And I think we have uh, accomplished that. Uh, staff has uh, provided a lot of input and I think we've taken it all to heart and it was a collaborative effort that produced, I think, uh, three really nice additions to the project. But with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Louis uh, to begin the presentation, and we can take it one by one. And if there are any questions, uh, Paul yeah. and I are here to answer those. Yeah, let's go through all three of them. Good morning. I'm Luis Rivera with Affinity Architects. And um, the first uh, style that uh, on lot four is the Anglo-Caribbean. This one is characterized by uh, the clean gables on each side of the house and the clean massing, uh, trying to differentiate from what's being uh, built in that same community. Um, uh, we have worked with, uh, like Mr. Glickstein said, with the staff to get uh, all the styles uh, and all the homes uh, to be uh, dif different from each other and to uh, work so that the landscape and driveways and colors are unique to each uh, of the styles. Any questions? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, any, any questions on uh, 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 on the style? We uh, with the staff we worked to uh, create a different massing from the rest of the community and try to make it unique in uh, comparison to the other ones. Do you have a streetscape with the entrance waves? So you can uh, see we have yeah. ones next to the other. At the end, we have uh, all the other un uh, or the other houses. Okay. Towards the end of the uh, presentation. Any questions, Paul? Um, yeah, a couple. Um, I noticed the setback in the front. Uh, they're all on on the thirty feet. So there's no way, I guess, you can vary. Uh, no, that's numbers. based on the code and. You understand that aesthetically. It oh, looks like a soldier's in formation. Well, uh, all of them have a different depth towards the front door um, versus the garages. Garages in some yes, some of them right. uh, of the styles is pushed forward while the entry is, is pushed back. And then all the entries on all the models are varied in location within the elevation, mm -hmm. which will create uh, enough variation to uh, distinguish it from each other. And, and the three homes you uh, have applications on today, uh, they're all one story. Correct. Um, and we're looking at this because you're building numerous homes. Uh, curious as to how many is going to be two stories versus one story. Well, right now, uh, uh, there's one uh, on the original three that we are building. Uh, one of them is a two story, and it's possible. Uh, two stories on lot eight and maybe others that we haven't designed yet but uh yeah there, there's possibility of more two story and, and the reason i ask uh you know we're going to have some lack of a better term redevelopment in the town of elstream and we have a lot of one-story houses i happen to like one-story houses so mm -hmm. i like what you're doing uh, i'm curious why you chose one story versus two story sure address that um uh, Commissioner, uh, first, um, I know with a very high probability that there will be at least four of the 14 that are two-story. That number may be higher, but I can say with some conviction that there will be at least four. There's already one of the three that are, that are built. Um, the way that this development was site-planned was to encourage single-story development. Um, the lots are wider than they are deep, which lends itself to single story homes, uh, which to your point, I think is more honorific of what exists in Gulfstream. And I think people prefer it if they have that option. I think you see a lot of two story homes uh, being built in other places because the lots are not as wide. So they're forced to go up because they can't go horizontal. Uh, in terms of the setback questions, um, we're, we're married to the same rules that everybody else is. I think the, the, the overarching challenge here um, is one of, of uh, getting the best we can get initially. Um, I think if you were to time lapse the development of Gulfstream with the code that it has, you would see the very the same problem, but over decades of change, landscaping, additions, paint, uh, roof differentiations, you don't see the same homogenous look that if you took a quick glance at what you're looking at today, it's not hard to say there's a lot of similarities here. Um, the second piece of that is, um, to your credit, you have a very prescriptive code. Um, we we there are certain architectural styles, there's certain finishes that are prohibited. So the box gets smaller, and when you're building everything within the box within a certain period of time, uh, landscape is only so big, it hasn't had the decades to mature and change and evolve. So um, I think the challenge, and I think we've met it with staff, is to do an, as much as you can within that code within the finishes that we can use, acceptable colors uh, to create as much 
differentiation as you can. Massing undulation, no question, Paul, that's, that's, we're, that, that's a challenge. Um, and I think that we're trying to create that. Uh, for example, we could change the look of a lot of these homes by moving the garages to face the streets. But nobody likes to look at garages that face the streets. So, so that is another thing that kind of takes it off the table. Um, you're not going to put the front door of the home all the way to the left or the right of the house. So, we're we're I think we've done as much as we can within the confines of the code and what are acceptable colors and finishes. Uh, so, with that, I think back to your original question. It wouldn't surprise me if there are probably six homes that are two-story by the time the subdivision is completed. The reason I say that is I know the two homes on the intercoastal will be sure. two-story. The home to the west of the north intercoastal lot will be two-story because there are views down the intercoastal, and I think the lot next to that may also capture some of that. So there's there's... That's why I say, again, with some conviction that there will be at least that many over time. Thank you. Nothing else from me. Yeah, I, I like the design of, of lot four, the one you just showed. Mm -hmm. but you just had a number of homes up and they all have this sidewalk that comes straight out from the door to the street. No, we, we, uh, vary, uh, we have variations on each lot of, uh, how it inter the the pathway to there the front door interacts. Right there. Um, uh, that's the, the original uh, concept. The original three do, do have the straight one, but the new houses that we're submitting today have different um, pathways to the front door. What do you change? That? Like uh, yeah, on lot uh, 14, for example, it goes all the way to the garage to the driveway. And same with lot 12. And then let 13, because of the style, it's a Georgian style. We want to keep it nice and classy, straight to the road. Yeah, don't, don't do any more. Okay. Move on to the next one. Take a look at the design before we get into the interior. Next one would be uh, lot 12, which is the West Indies. Yeah, as you see, that one has the pathway yeah, going to the yeah. Uh, yeah. And this one is uh, right now the three um, houses or homes that we have in there. Uh, the two stories are also uh, West Indies and we wanted to differentiate. Uh, so we made a one story version of that with sort of the same uh, uh, elements, but changing colors and uh, the look of the front entry and all that stuff. So uh, landscape was also a big part of, of these three uh, lots. We wanted to differentiate uh, location of trees, uh, heights of trees, and uh, the way they interact with the, pa with the pathways towards the driveway, uh, we wanted to create variation within the th uh, three homes. I'm curious, the tree on the, on the right, it's pretty sizable. Is that an oak? What is that? Uh, Mr. Alapos <clears throat> can elaborate on that. We're going to steal that from the existing home in Plasis. So yeah. It <laughs> Yeah, it looks like a very mature tree. It, it is. It's that a, big it, when you install it? It's a large specimen, uh, gumbo limbo. Um, I, I, I want to add to this. Uh, one of the ways that we added a more variety, so so it's not just in the plant material, it's also in the walkways, whether they're undulating or straight and going in, depending on the style and the architecture. Um, we also... Uh, differentiated in the undulation, how the landscape beds uh, come out to the roadway, whatever. So with the landscape, we have movement. It's not flat, you know, it kind of brings it out to the street and so forth. We did eliminate the walkways coming from the walkway entry to the street on most of these models. And two of these, uh, which is lot four and 12, we added a 
curvilinear undulating walkway, which we like and probably yeah. will as we go down in the future, we'll change it. But yes, that was one that we wanted to break up some of the uh, formality in, in the elevation. And we added a nice specimen tree that will work with the three large oak trees that we have on the street to kind of break up and give it some depth. Thank you. Okay. Let's take a look at lot 13. Then if you would touch on the roofing uh, sure. window and, and sure. shutter materials. Yes. Uh, lot 13 is uh, Georgian style. Uh, again, we uh, we wanted to uh, differentiate. This is the first uh, Georgian that we introduce in the uh, community. Um, this one has uh, shutters uh, all around on all four elevations. Uh, the roof color is uh, true to the uh, Georgian style and uh, the color of the house is a little more muted in order to create that classy uh, Georgian traditional style. And again, this one is the one we um, uh, kept the straight uh, looks, uh, the straight pathway to the front door to create that, you know, uh, Georgian uh, ambiance, <laughs> for lack of a better word, to uh, to the entry. But that uh, doesn't go all the way to the street. Uh, yes. Oh, it does go all yeah, the yeah. way to the street. Yes. What's the purpose of yeah, what's going the all purpose the all way to the street? Just curiosity. <laughs> well. Uh, that's what I was wondering. Yeah, when uh, people park in the front of the street, they can go straight rather than going from the uh, driveway towards the uh, front door. And, it, and this creates the linear look towards the front door from the street. Do we have a lot of houses with a sidewalk going straight to the front door? A lot of what? I'm houses sorry. in don't have of Soleil. I don't believe so. What? A lot. No, no. Let me I mean, I think it. it's kind of strange. Well, one of the reasons that we did initially was because it's it's a small community, you know, 14 homes. And we felt like if neighbors wanted to go to someone's house, you know, the way that the, since we had the side entry garage that the walkway went from the front entry, um, you know, to the driveway, you know, et cetera that this would be an easy way to, and there was no sidewalks on the streets, be an easy way for neighbors or whatever, if they were going to someone's house, to walk down the street, you know, and access the front entry to the house, you know, through a walkway to the street. Um, hmm. You know, um, hence why uh, on, on the uh, Georgian uh, residents, uh, the, the other two do not have access to the street that we're proposing today. On that one, we kept it because it's more of a formal setting and landscape. And we have these two double rows of, um, you know, nice foxtail palms going to the house. And that kind of it, it fit in with the uh, design that we were doing. Um, I don't know how that's going to be perceived uh, we, with our, our initial uh, idea of connecting the homes you know through those walkways that went straight to the entry because people are not gonna walk up the driveway and whatever i guess we can um that's how everybody else does it here yeah yeah <laughs> or walk on grass right to to well, the, no, the driveway they go up the driveway and around yeah. right. so it gives it a track like feeling to have the vertical sidewalk going to the street <clears throat> Uh, Mayor, commissioners, if you don't want the sidewalk to the street, the sidewalk won't go to the street. It's just that it's really that simple. It right. doesn't. It doesn't. It's. I think the 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 reasoning for it has been explained. In the end, it's your discretion. And if you want it to just stop putting sidewalks to the street, we'll stop putting sidewalks to the street. That's an easy one. I, I yeah. think probably get rid of this stuff. That's fine. I mean, that's my personal less, opinion. No, actually, <laughs> less, yeah, I think, uh, it's actually less material. Yeah, I think I'm yeah. on board. Thank, thank you, I mean, Karen. I think that it makes it easy. a little warmer not to have right. more pavement. Yeah, just shoot it over to the driveway. Uh, good, OK. Um, roofing materials on all three homes? Uh, it's a uh, flat uh, concrete tile roof. And, and the 
color i can never i can never really tell from from this yes what what color are they oh uh we have some samples he has them. um <laughs> oh, 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 watch it watch it so this is lot four well we know it's not a composite <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So it's uh, concrete, right? Through, yeah, flat. through and through. Is that material. brown? What yeah. is color is that? This is like a, I would say, like an espresso color, espresso okay. color, like okay. nice and dark. And the oh, first one? Products come along. The first one is lighter. A little lighter. Yeah. yeah it's just okay. yeah. So then, at least they're not the same. That's true. No, I like it. It differentiates the homes. Yeah. Um, and it's through and through. It's not like trying to just paint it. Um, shutters. Mm -hmm. Didn't see a lot of shutters on uh, lot, lot four. It's hard for me to tell from there. So we'll go on uh, lot um, lot thirteen. Rear lot thirteen. Uh, we have shutters all around. On the back. Um, I believe so. Yes. Really? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. Do you? Oh, maybe they're just not on here. Do you see shadows? No, that's why I raised the question because I don't see them. Yeah. The oh. doors obviously don't have shutters. It's only on the window. Talking about on the yeah, I think yeah. we have a little bit of yeah. Yeah. Looks like you got uh, French door. French door, and then you got sliders. Yeah. 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 It's not... Okay. Um. All right, and then paint colors. We have. Uh, is it too white and maybe a tan? Again, I have trouble. They're all so, uh, off white. I don't know if we have swatches of the colors, but it might be easier just to circulate these yeah. packages. There you go for lot 13. <clears throat> yeah, 13. 12. <clears throat> Remember when we had all the yellow houses? <laughs> yellow. Yeah, that's all I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. they're all going to be uh, different uh, shutter colors and uh, stucco color and trim color. I'm sorry for all the questions. I, you work very hard on this. Oh, no worries. For months and months, and you come in and we're picking it. No worries. Yeah. It's uh, part of the job. Okay. Yeah, I think they're sufficiently different. I'm good. Um, any other comments, questions? No, I don't. I don't uh, think. Regarding landscaping, anything else? We, we generally defer. I think the ARPP did an extensive uh, review of this, and you've gone back a couple times with that. So um, I'm we're trusting trusting them and, and your representations. So Thank you. It looked, you know, it's good. Particularly with Mr. Glickstein's uh, concession on the <laughs> sidewalk. The only thing is, is any any whatever from the neighbors? Any comments from Plaza Soleil residents? No. Uh, no, we okay. Haven't heard of any of that. Perfect. Okay. Uh, any motions? Vice Mayor, this looks like something yeah, up your alley. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make the match here. Uh, we've got to do. Uh, let's go with three separate motions. So first, uh, I'm going to make a motion to approve uh, 2917 Blue Water Cove Level 3 uh, Architectural Site Plan. Um, this is a motion to a construction of a new one-story 5,462 square foot Anglo-Caribbean single-family home, including new landscape and hardscape 
and a two-car garage and swimming pool. Uh, to be noted, any minor modifications to the approved landscaping shall be submitted to the town manager for review and approval, and any major modifications shall be brought back to the ARPB for review and approval prior to commencement of the landscaping. Second. Ms. Basil. Commissioner Orthwein. Yes. Commissioner Lyons. Yes. Vice Mayor Stanley. Yes. Mayor Morton. Yes. Uh, second application is uh, for level three architectural site plan review for 2914 uh, Blue Water Cove lot 13. The prior one should have been 2917 Blue Water Cove lot four. This is lot 13. Uh, level three architectural site plan review application to construct a new one story, 5,464 square foot Georgian style single family home, including a new lands landscape and hardscape and a two car garage and swimming pool. Uh, any minor modifications to the approved landscaping shall be submitted to the town manager for review and approval. Any major modifications should be brought back to the ARPB for review and approval prior to commencement of the landscaping. Second. And subject to Second. the reroute. And this one is, yeah, also additional condition from the uh, condition from the town commission is to uh, eliminate the uh, front sidewalk to the street and just remain the, uh, retain the L shape to the uh, to the driveway. Second. Ms. Basil. Commissioner Orthwine. Yes. Commissioner Lyons. Yes. Vice Mayor Stanley. Yes. Mayor Morgan. Yes. Uh, third application is uh, for 2916 Blue Water Cove, lot 12. Uh, this is a level three architectural site plan um, application for the construction of a new new one story 5,461 foot home, West Indy, West Indy style, single family home, including new landscape and hardscape and a two car garage and swimming pool. Uh, minor modifications to the approved landscaping shall be submitted to the town manager for review and approval and major modifications shall be brought back to the ARPB for review and approval prior to commencement of the landscaping. Second. Second. Ms. Mm -hmm. Basin. Commissioner Orthwine. Yes. Commissioner Lyons. Yes. Vice Mayor Stanley. Yes. Mayor Morgan. Yes. Thank you very much. Right. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck. Oh, wait. I have your colors in case somebody else wants to see them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would add, uh, Joan, since you asked, the, the is, as you know, you tend to hear the complaints a lot more than the accolades, but the people that I know in Plaza Soleil and, and those that, I'm, that I've just gotten to know, I think it's been on balance very positive since the entrance has been completed. They, they were very patient through that process, but I think that they're all appreciative now of what's going on there relative to uh their part of Plaza Soleil. So I think Good. for the most part it's been very positive. Yeah, and it looks nice. Happy That's holidays great. to all of you. And to you. Thank you. All right, let's move on. Town manager, the water service agreement update. Yes, sir. I'm gonna uh <clears throat> hand this over to Mr. Nazar. Thank you, um uh, Mr. Town Manager. So just by way of an update. The Boynton Beach Utilities Director was out for the Thanksgiving holiday and the week after. She returned this Monday and we have exchanged emails about meeting with her team and one of the city's assistant managers to discuss next steps. She mentioned that Boynton Beach is working with Delray on a street streetscape project whose limits are just west of the railroad tracks on Gulfstream Boulevard. If you recall, this is the same area that Boynton would need to run infrastructure from their current line on Seacrest east on Gulfstream Boulevard to the connection in front of Place Hosselet on Federal. So both Boynton Beach and Delray Beach are discussing the water main construction project and how to incorporate it into their own joint public works project. Uh, our water line installation will be done in two phases and we're going to engage our engineers to be a part of that discussion regarding plans, timelines, and cost. We had an initial figure of $2 million for that infrastructure, and we'll home in on that as it becomes more clear with the, the, um, their, uh, their projects. Uh, during the initial meeting, it was believed incorporating the town's water main project into that joint Boynton Delray project would reduce the cost. So we're optimistic that we don't have you know, big cost overruns on that. Uh, for payment, we have the water fund as a revenue source for this purpose. We don't believe that ad valorem taxes would need to be used to repay a loan uh, in this amount while keeping water bills at the same amount or lower. However, we will discuss the CIP project and its financing later in the meeting and how that may impact this discussion. Uh, we're also starting a rate discussion as part of our meeting with, with Boynton. We believe there'll be a savings that will offset the cost of the Boynton water main connection project 
in the first seven years. Uh, Tom Smith uh, has run the numbers based on some in initial figures that we have uh, based on a uh, the maximum 25% premium over inside rates. Um, and that it would be um, an, an agreement um, for 25 years. So we have a 25 year agreement. We'd maybe have some financing where we would uh, be able to recoup that from um, revenue in the water fund in seven to 10 years while maintaining water rates. Um, and that's the update on that for now. Uh, if you have any questions. The only question I have, I, I've seen the numbers um, and I agree with Tom's analysis um, and uh, your assumption that we stay with uh, Del Rey, we effectively uh, be paying the same cost, including paying for that $2 million. That, that's correct. Oh, certainly uh, over the short term. So to me, the uh, devil in the detail is the term of the agreement. You said 25. Is that is that been agreed to or is that typical? I mean, yeah, the, the Delray utility, I'm sorry, the Boynton utility director mentioned that she wanted a long-term agreement and we sure. said we'd be fine with, with 25 years. So that was the, you know, we're all kind of on, on board with that long, that So theoretically years. you could amortize the cost if you chose over 25 years. Correct. Well, right. No, you, it's theoretically. Yeah, yes, theoretically, yes, yes. Thank you. What do you need from us? Or At this point, this is just an update just to continue to, you know, provide information. And then again, as this maybe relates to financing of the CIP, just wanted to, you know, have this in the, forefront of everyone's mind as it relates to all that as well. Um, Do we need to present anything to, to uh, between the commissions of Point and Beach and Gulfstream to move forward or, or do we want to get engineering? Right, first? right. So we'll, I think we'll want to get engineering on board first and then have um, to determine exactly what the cost is and then have uh, that rate discussion and ideally have something that the Boynton Beach Council approves so we have a, a good before we start really anything and that would be brought before uh, before the commission as well um, so that's kind of our next step um, part of that meeting is going to be all right we're going to get their attorney to draft an agreement very simple um, you know outlining rates and, and things like that probably comparable to what we have with with Delray Beach um, very good, thank you. Uh, wall construction on Pelican Avenue. Uh, yes, thanks, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to inform you that there will be some seawall construction, uh, which of course includes pilings uh, at the end of Pelican. That's I think spot 55. This is a part of the Brown uh, residence. Um, there, uh, there's a uh, renovation of that house that's going on right now, uh, which includes a, a new seawall. It, it is, yeah, it's the last house, uh, actually the southwesternmost house in, in Gulfstream, and it's got a very large seawall. So I'm just informing you that, uh, that there's going to be two or three weeks of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know aisle driving. Um, but it's necessary to fit into their schedule of the construction of the house. Uh, there was an emergency a couple of years ago. The Browns also did some work during the season on a, it was an emergency seawall, uh, uh, yeah, seawall reconstruction. And we've got no complaints uh, during that period of time. That was a different threat. Yeah. All right, good, so thank you. This is just a four year information. Uh, how about an update on 2900 Avenue, I'll select. I'll handle that Mr. one. Uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, Commissioners. So this week I was able to meet with our engineers and outside legal counsel to review the agreements that the current owner is requiring to be approved prior to demolition of the structures. <clears throat> Excuse me. A special magistrate order required the house be demolished by Monday, December 4th, and a seawall rehabilitation permit be obtained. The current owners refused and is pushing for a sale instead. So that's obviously what we're working for. Uh, so there is now a second code enforcement issue while the parties work out the engineering work and legal descriptions of new easements. Um, the agreement also needs to be approved by the big club. His attorney has indicated he's busy, but we'll get to it when he can. So I, I hope to bring a document titled Agreement to Modify Easement Agreement before the commission during a special meeting later this month that is in final form. 
uh, based on feedback from the engineers and our outside counsel this week. The agreement will cover uh, the demolition date of the house, which will be completed six weeks after the effective date of the agreement, uh, which will be uh, the date that it was approved by both the town and the big club. Uh, the town will be paid code enforcement fees owed, either all that are due as of the date of demolition or reduced by whatever percentage the commission feels is appropriate. Um, you know, I would just like to note that, uh, you know, we have paid special magistrate fees and it had a significant uh, time investment from staff, Renee, uh, and the town manager, myself. Um, the town will then release its code enforcement lien. The town will agree to provide the new owner more time than is allowed in the code enforcement order to replace the failing seawall extending the required permit application date from December 1st to 90 days after the effective date of the agreement and start work within 60 days of permit issuance. We don't have any issues with that. Um, that we kind of always imagined that the seawall replacement, if it was, if this agreement all went through, would be done in conjunction with some of that, uh, the waterline work. <clears throat> the utility easement that covers the entirety of the property will be vacated by the town and the big club. The property owner will install a new water line for the town. The property owner will provide a new easement for maintenance and replacement of the new town water line. And the agreement will be approved only once the town water line is installed and all inspections have been completed. Uh, an amendment to partial release and modification of easement, which is a second document that you'll see, uh, will be part of the special meeting packet and that will be effective and that will essentially be recorded in the public records making all of what i've just said official with those release of those easements and then the additional easements very complicated but i just wanted to give you a rundown of sort of how that works uh, we have very competent legal counsel sitting in the back that uh, was responsible for drafting that and i it, it passed the initial smell test but jones foster also reviewed it and said that everything uh, everything was appropriate so uh we're just continuing to work on that hope to get it uh, sooner rather than later and um, i think renee will be trying to reach you guys for some availability in december for a special meeting thank you <clears throat> It's a long update for just a easement agreement. It, <laughs> this has been a very complicated uh, uh, and, and challenging um, uh, issue for for the resident and the town. So thank you, uh, Mr. Nazaro, for all your work on that. Um, all right, <clears throat> uh, ARPB meeting. Next one will be December 28th at 8.30 a.m. for anyone who wishes to come to that uh, during the holidays. Um, finance report. Uh, yes, both the finance uh, report and the water report. Uh, uh, there's nothing unusual in these uh, uh, reports, so I would ask you to approve them. Okay. Any questions? No. No. no? Thank you very much. We'll accept them as submitted. Chief. Good please. morning, Commission. Mayor, I would ask that you accept our report as well. Nothing unusual or abnormal about the report. Uh, activity has increased from last year to this year. And I will also update you that our final vacancy within the police department will be filled January 15th okay. with a new police officer. And that will then uh, encompass all of the vacant positions that we've had when I started as your chief. Well, well done. Yeah. Remind me, how many officers will we have? 15? We will have a total of 14 We're police 14. officers. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Very good. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate Thank that. Um, all right. Let's move on then to... Uh, if, if I've got this right, A is appointing a new commission member to replace Tom Smith, um, who resigned last last month. Um, yes. I, you know, I, I feel that we should have somebody from Plaza Soleil with that opening. I, I spoke to to Malcolm, um, who who is uncertain what his what what his plans are going to be. So my recommendation is that Rob Canfield, who's been on the ARPB for a while. I uh, study. He's young. I think he'd be a good uh, member of our commission. Should be moved up to the to the town commission. Comments? I think it's important to have someone from Plaza Soleil. Last time we couldn't, so I think it's a it, it's important. And Malcolm highly recommends it as well. Yeah, that's good um, because we we have one at Malcolm. Yes, right. <laughs> right yeah. And he didn't have the time or the whatever to come on so i think it's important we go back to having someone represent plaza soleil i agree very good um then let's uh have a motion do we uh yes uh motion uh to approve uh the appointment of robert canfield to the position of town commission second Ms. Bates. commissioner orthwine 
Yes. Commissioner Lyon. Yes. Vice Mayor Stanley. Yes. Mayor Morgan. Yes. Uh, along the same line, that opens up a position on the ARPB. Um, I'm, I'm going to suggest at the end of this meeting that we send to the ARPB the difficult and knotty issue of massing to be just thoroughly evaluated, studied, public meetings if required, whatever is done to, to bring to the commission um, recommendations on how we can address uh, in a reasonable way massing in our community. And for that reason, uh, I'm, my recommendation is that Tom Smith, who was a former chairman of the ARPB, be appointed to fill Rob Canfield's position on the ARPB. Will he be an alternate then, or will he go right on? No, he would go right on. On that, okay. Yeah, I support that. Uh, so you need a motion? I think we yes. do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, Go ahead. Motion to approve uh, Tom Smith uh, back to the uh, AR position of uh, being on the ARPB. As a regular member. As a regular member and not as an old. Uh, I'll second it. Ms. Bates. Commissioner Orthwine. Yes. Commissioner Lyons. Yes. Vice Mayor Stanley. Yes. Mayor Morgan. Yes. Uh, uh, thank you. Okay, well, let's move on then to the Australian Pines Protection Ordinance. Uh, Mr. Nazaro. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. This document is based on something provided by the Town Arborist titled Tree Preservation Standards During Construction. Uh, a lot of the whereas clauses I pulled from, uh, from the website and town documents regarding the importance of the Australian Pines to the community. Um, it requires that construction activities when Australian pines are in the right-of-way or on the property uh, within the first 50 feet, which is the North Ocean Boulevard overlay district, uh, essentially be, be protected and that the arborist, you know, review uh, some of those plans. Um, all of the protective measures, like I said, were taken from a document that was uh, adopted by, I want to say, Florida International University, some sort of large uh, campus that had um, tree preservation uh, had engaged uh, Bartlett Tree Service for a tree preservation uh, rules and regulations. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to, to answer, but that's really what we're looking at. This is to prevent issues that we've experienced uh, recently regarding uh, construction uh, close to Australian pines, which could have been prevented with some, um, some arborist, arborist oversight. Yeah. Yeah, Australian pines are so important to the town of Gulfstream. Um, uh, historically and aesthetically. Uh, so you had discussed this at the last meeting. So this ordinance 23 slash three is being brought to us on first reading. Ms. An Bates. ordinance of the town commission of the town of Gulfstream, Palm Beach County, Florida, amending the town code ordinances at chapter 66, zoning article seven, North Ocean Boulevard overlay district, section 66, 323, same application and renaming section 66, 327 reserved to section 66, 327 Australian pines to provide for tree protection measures during development projects in the North Ocean overlay district, providing that each and every section and subsection of chapter 66 zoning shall remain in full force and effect as previously adopted, providing for severability, providing for repeal of ordinances in conflict, providing for codification, providing an effective date and for other purposes for first reading on this eighth day of December, 2023. Uh, ordinance 23 slash three has been brought to us on first reading. Is there a motion to approve? I'll move to approve ordinance number 23 slash three. Second. Renee? Commissioner Orthland. <laughs> yes. Commissioner Lyons? Yes. Vice Mayor Stanley? Yes. Mayor Morgan? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's move on then to uh, the bid consideration for the CIP, Mr. Dunn. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, if you recall, uh, at the last meeting, we um, introduced the, the two bids that we received for our CIP project uh, that we otherwise known as the core area. And uh, uh, the two uh, numbers were uh, higher than what uh, we had uh, projected. Um, let me just go back uh, just a few minutes and talk about uh, how we got to where we are today. If you recall, we started developing the 10-year capital improvement 
uh, program at the end of 17 and into 18. And um, that was done by uh, Commissioner Lyons, myself, and, and uh, Rebecca too, who was our CFO at the time. And we developed a cash management plan that included inflation numbers, uh, but uh, one that we felt uh, that we would be able to use or, or use as revenues our general fund uh, fund balance to uh, pay for the entire uh, CIP project. At the time, the CIP project was the, the whole 10-year project was estimated to be around $10.5 million, perhaps pushing $11 million. Um, the assumptions that we made in developing that were that uh, we would uh, continue uh, regular increases in our fund balance, um, general fund balances uh, with the increases in our property values, which they have done. So that assumption was correct. And uh, we, we also assume this next year, we will see a, a, a healthy increase in the fund balance, as Mark will explain to you here in a minute. Um, and we also uh, obviously uh, expected increases in expenses uh, through uh, normal inflationary numbers that we did include in, in our number. We did not expect uh, the inflation that has occurred over the last few years to, to happen. Uh, there were COVID impacts on construction, supply chain issues. You've heard all of those issues. I think uh, the mayor could testify about uh, some of those impacts that the inflation has had uh, on, on small businesses. Um, also, uh, bit recently, bills have been passed uh, to, uh, to fund major infra infrastructure projects by Congress. There's a lot of money out there, a lot of grant money out there, and so it makes uh, jobs like this uh, very competitive, and, uh, and uh, bidders uh, are, are uh, uh, more likely to bid higher numbers than normal at this, in, in this kind of an economic period. So those have contributed to the raise in uh, materials, the cost of materials um, in construction projects. Uh, our engineer can testify to that. Uh, now, um, so while our uh, fund balances are very good and continue to be good, they have not been able to keep up with these inflationary uh, uh, impediments that we're uh, working with right now. Uh, so, but none of these economic impacts, uh, in my opinion, should affect uh, the work that we're uh, intended on doing and, and plan to do. Um, the uh, the water mains are important. Uh, they're, uh, they're the age of the water mains. Uh, it would be uh, not unresponsible uh, in, you know, for the town not to address that at this point in time. And I can have uh, uh, the engineer discuss that. Uh, and uh, and the second part of this uh, project, of course. Our residents can't see those improvements because they're underground, so they don't know that much about those. But they're they're vitally important to the town. What they can see is the condition of our streets and drainage in, in the core area. And uh, so, again, in my opinion, I don't think we should uh, 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 take anything out of the scope of work, uh, uh, even uh, with the the bid that that came back uh, to us. Um, uh, I would ask uh, our engineer, Rebecca, to uh, talk about the water mains and their importance uh, for just a minute. Good morning. Yeah, I, I guess to preface it, when, when this issue came up and the, the, the significantly higher bids came in than what we expected, and, and you'll recall months back when we were planning for this program, uh, mm -hmm. we were under the assumption that we would not require any additional financing. We could, we could pay for this entire project by uh, just uh, with our reserves and, and, and our ad valorem uh, income. 
that that has changed. And so one of the things that we considered with staff and with our engineering uh, assistance is, well, can we carve anything out? Should we carve out the the underground, the the the, the water mains? And and the answer I think that Rebecca will give us is absolutely not. That's the driving force. It's the mains that 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 started this whole process. We right. must fix them. The roads are the that's the icing that doesn't have to be done, but needs to be done. The water mains are absolutely essential to the town. Is that correct? Yes, Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Travis with Baxter Women. Um, you're correct, Mayor. Uh, the the start of this project, the reason the project was uh, considered in the first place had to do with the age and pipe material of the water main in the in the town. Uh, some uh, of the water main is undersized, uh, cannot support a uh, fire hydrant. So we need to upsize for that reason. And then the other part of it had to do with moving uh, the water main that's um, in the rear of the homes to the front, to the street in the front, so that they can be maintained and accessed more readily. Um, the age of the water main is is nearing its um, useful service wow. life. The pipe material um, becomes brittle and uh -huh. um, as it ages, so that's the reason to upgrade all the water main throughout the, the core area. Um, and as also Mayor and the manager mentioned, uh, the town has been uh, concerned about the look of the rutting ad adjacent to the edges of the roads, the maintaining a minimum width for the roads. Uh, this project proposes uh, curb along all the edges of the roads. We're going to introduce more of a cross slope and a longitudinal slope on the roadways to get the standing water following rain events to the to the inlets and get it off the roads um, and then improve the edge the edge condition of all the roads. Um, regarding the bidding environment, it has been because there's a lot of funding available. All pretty much every city in town has got projects out there for bid, and it's fair. The contractors can be very selective, and consequently, the their prices are have been higher. Um, and we have um, instances where we've seen we maybe get two at the most bidders. In the past, we maybe would get five, six, seven bidders. Now we're getting maybe two, sometimes one, sometimes no bidders. So uh, I, I think it's fortunate, so to speak, that we've gotten two on this, this project. And uh, I, I believe there's too much of a risk to push, kick this project down the road, you know, to, to rebid. We might not get any bids. Uh, the city of Delray Beach just bid a large uh, Parks and Rec project and included a new building and associated Parks and Rec facilities. I think the job was something around six or seven million dollars. They didn't receive any bids for that job. Or that you wouldn't get a higher bid. Correct. Uh, that, that would be the other risk involved is that, okay, the numbers are out there and so we get new bids and they're all higher than the ones that we got. Um, so. Um, my my recommendation would be to uh, accept this bid and and so we can move this project mm -hmm. on. I have two thoughts. One, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, be careful what you ask for. You may have <laughs> zero. Um, so I think we ought to take this bid. Um, I'd like to uh, spend two minutes on uh, back to your comments on the background. Um, when we did this engineering study back in 2018. We had 7 million in, in uh, reserve balances. Uh, over a period of five, six years, we produced surpluses each year without increasing taxes. Right. Um, and then we built it up to 13. Uh, now we've uh, eaten into that surplus, so we're break even, for lack of a better word. Um, to delay it, 
isn't going to accomplish a thing other than we're not going to enjoy the improvement for many more years and we're not going to build any incremental reserves so you know it's not going away um and we need to do this so my strong recommendation is we accept this bid and get on with it so what was the purpose of building up the reserves was right. was to, absolutely to use them for this project um however it's now reached a point where the, the reserves don't uh, don't carry the project so the next step is and i think we're all in agreement we should proceed we should accept the low bid and proceed with the project the question is how how do we pay for it how, how in a reasonable manner do we use our reserves and some financing to address this project so let me explain the documents we uh, put uh, at your uh, seat this morning the spreadsheet that sh uh, has three different scenarios uh, the top uh, spreadsheet uh, assumes that we would continue uh, on the same pace uh, in terms of our general revenue, uh, uh, general fund revenues on an annual basis, which over the last several years has been uh, between $800 to $1,000 to a $1 million. Uh, the second one assumes uh, half that amount, and the third, uh, third one at the bottom uh, assumes just a straight line even um, uh, uh, number so with no uh, no property value increases uh, to, in terms of the general fund uh, balance uh, so no, fund. no no growth in, in revenue from that correct fund. and so um, we've asked our um, CFO Mark uh, to uh, look at these scenarios and in terms of a loan uh, we are using the bottom scenario where we're break, breaking even on the fund balances uh, and uh, the terms I believe were a 15-year loan and uh, borrowing is it six and a half million yeah we came up with because we we wanted to keep a, a scenario where the, where, the, where the growth was static uh, throughout the project right. and and uh, and at the end of the project, still be able to have a healthy reserve for future endeavors. So what we looked at is, is what for that scenario, what what would the town need to borrow to still have a approximate four million dollar reserve at the end of at the end of this CIP project? And what we calculated was a, an estimated of a, about a seven million dollar loan at fifteen years to to accomplish still having a health reserve in that scenario uh, moving forward uh, i think uh, i'd ask the attorney to um, uh, share with you uh, information that he got from the league of cities uh, the league of cities provides a service uh, uh, to uh, prepare rfps for banking institutions uh, and they sent us uh, a recent uh, example of uh, a town that successfully uh, used their services uh, for a loan for an infrastructure project. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Town Manager. So the 15 years and the 5% rate uh, were not just picked out of thin air, but those were something that Rodney Walton, who is with the Florida Municipal Loan Council's bank loan program, uh, indicated were approximately what he had seen, the rate, uh, and what banks like to see as far as a term, 15 or, or 20, I'm sorry, 10 or 15 years, not something as long as 20. So that's why, how we came up with those. So the Florida Municipal Loan Council's bank loan program assists municipalities with obtaining long-term financing, which includes a competitive RFP process for soliciting banks that are interested in providing financing for new projects. Um, just some inf quick information uh, from the website. They can identify interested lenders. Competitive solicitation ensures best pricing. There's no bond insurance. Flexible payment schedules with amortizations designed to meet the borrower's needs, lower upfront costs because there's no public offering, uh, there's tax exempt financing, and there's quick completion because the entities don't have to be pooled with other borrowers. So it'd be something that we would just engage them. They'd put together an RFP and really walk us through the process. Um, so if this is something that we were interested in doing, he would be available in January to give us some additional information and sort of 
uh, like a presentation, uh, but we would just need to get sort of, I guess, an initial engagement uh, agreement with him. Uh, I don't know that the details are of that, but I could have his um, his office sort of put something together and we can look at that before we get engaged in something more serious. Uh, but if this is something you're interested in doing, I would recommend just um, the expertise that they have that is available, um, you know, in, in engaging them. So, Just one last comment is uh, that we really wouldn't need to do this probably until the fall because we've already budgeted for this year's uh, expenses. And uh, so we'd be looking to perhaps uh, do this in September or October. So I, I, I have a couple of questions. Um, Mark, I, by the way, um, I think we are we all in agreement that our target should be about four million. There's a minimum fund balance. Yes. Yeah, that that's been my position. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, the the question that I have, um, and uh, that last scenario I really like because. We're not adjust, adjusting the ad valorem taxes at all for this? No, it's, it's staying, staying uh, steady, the, the same amount each year. So it went, there's no growth. So we're not, gonna in, we're not collecting any incremental funds from the residents for this <laughs> by increasing the... Correct. In this scenario, it's, it's, stay, it's, it's essentially you're using the rollback rate. Uh, okay, okay. Good, and that's a, yeah. a wonderful outcome. Yeah. Because we, we had discussed looking at it doing over the next three or four years, and uh, it wasn't a pretty picture uh, in terms of. No, I, I got <clears throat> my compliments to Mark uh, because w when this all came up, uh, it, was, it was very discouraging. Staff has worked very hard on this, brought Mark in, asked Paul to get involved to, to try to figure out a way we could accomplish this without tax increases without cutting uh, the project. Uh, and, and they work diligently to come up with uh, what I think is an, an, an outstanding presentation. Uh, Mark has allowed me to sleep the last two nights because I've been so worried about this. But if you take the bottom uh, graph, which assumes no growth whatsoever, no increase in property values, tax revenue remains the same, um, That that is, an extremely conservative approach. We still end up without tax increases, with a, a fund balance, and the project gets completed on time. I think it's it's, it's an outstanding way to, to approach this. I think well, Mark's motivation was he didn't want to hear from me again. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and one, one last com one last comment, Mayor, is uh, if we did the, the the bottom scenario here. Uh, this would not affect any of the other services that we already provide to the town. This is one thing. Uh, the, the other factor, I mean, just to, to air this all out, the other factor is that at, at the time we are now confronted with the Delray Boynton water issue. And we're going to have to have approximately a $2 million uh, requirement to pay for a, a new water line. However, that has been worked out. Uh, I believe Mr. Nazaro mentioned it this morning that that won't require tax increases. It will. It, it's a fee-based project. The water pricing with Boynton is reduced. The fees probably remain the same. The, the water bill that our residents will see should not change much at all yet we can still finance that project, pay for that project. It's not really so much a finance, <clears throat> pay for the project. So it's unfortunate we have both of these big projects coming in so expensively at the same time. But uh, my, my kudos to Mark and to Paul and to staff for uh, working this out in a way that we can we can do both. And Tom Smith was very helpful. And, and Tom as well, I'm sorry. Yeah, Tom, Tom worked diligently on, on yeah. particularly the water. But, um, um, okay, I, I can't imagine we're not all in agreement to take advantage of the League of Cities to assist us in, in putting together finance requests of banks. That's fine. Is there anything better? 
just i mean no no sure so i i mean i i don't this is this is what they do this this program <laughs> Um, it, they work with municipalities specifically. They look at bank loans. They put together RFPs to solicit the most competitive rates. So I don't know what that their their fee is to do that work. Um, but in the end, I mean, this is really exactly what we want—a very competitive, you know, solicitation document for banks to bid on. Um, what I can feel very comfortable using. The lead. The lead. Lead. I, I, I'm just asking. No, absolutely. Sure. About it well, because it's a pretty secure loan. So, I, mean, I want really good interest rates. <laughs> well, we we are so the the document that so the league is just putting together a solicitation document for banks to bid on. So because right. of that, I think that we will they will all understand our our borrowing history, our mm -hmm. fund balance, you know, everything like that in that solicitation document that should ideally make the banks be very competitive in in bidding a, a, an interest rate. I would think. But regarding. <clears throat> Commissioner Orthwine's question, um, we're looking at bank, uh, are there other alternatives? And I mean, as you know, there are other alternatives, uh, such as uh, some type of municipal debt financing. Uh, I don't know to what degree you've examined that. It's a small amount. I don't know how cost effective it is, uh, but that, that certainly no, is a common practice. To do that kind of situation. Right. So, my initial discussion with Mr. Walton was that um, the amount that we were initially looking at was so small that uh, it didn't make sense to, to do a municipal bond. Now that we're looking at, so that was a $2 million figure. We're now looking at, at seven. Um, so we can have that discussion and he can sort of guide us on what he think would be the most cost effective way, way to do that. Yeah, I think if you look at all. There's options. more than one way to skin a cat, so we'll see what the best way. Yeah, to you'll do bring it. back their proposal and costs, right. and you know, we'll, we'll evaluate it at that time. I mean, we have contacts in this town as well. Yeah. We're blessed with with some great financial minds and contacts, uh, so we're not simply beholden to the Lake of Cities. Yeah. No, because it is. I mean, we we're a pretty good risk for a loan. I think. <laughs> we have been in the past. How's that? <laughs> yeah, we're good. Um, okay. It, 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 I think we sounds like we're all in agreement on on how we should proceed. So the first step, I believe, is to um, move forward on the low bidders. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I would be looking for a motion. To find that. But, document the yeah. uh, roadway constructions low bid was twelve million nine hundred ninety eight thousand three hundred twenty four dollars and ninety three cents is there a motion to approve that bidders uh motion to approve the bid for the uh, town town water main street and drainage project as presented at that price uh, second miss Bates. Commissioner Orthwine. Yes. Commissioner Lyons. Yes. Vice Mayor Stanley. Yes. Mayor Morgan. Yes. Uh, we don't need a motion, but next would be for Mr. Nazaro to reach out to the League of Cities and let's see what they propose with respect to financing. Great. As, as far as the project dates, that will need to be worked out with roadway construction. Yeah. We've talked about postponing this somewhat, push, pushing it beyond um, what what originally was going to be a start date in this season. Uh, and I did speak uh, with our engineers about that. Uh, we were looking at uh, potentially a notice to proceed in February because the first month is generally just paperwork. Uh, I will refer to Rebecca. Yes, yeah, so typically when we give a notice to proceed to the contractor, there's a initial at least month time frame where they get their uh, shop drawings started and uh, they don't actually mobilize out into the field for possibly a month or more. Um, with um, There's still some supply chain issues and typically what we like to do is get have a preliminary meeting, get the contractor started on some of these long lead item shop drawings so they can get in to be manufactured or ordered and so forth. 
and then we can condition his notice to proceed to go out in the field only after uh, March 1st um, and uh, you know so work it so that he doesn't actually start with equipment until a March date. How long would you expect it to take for them to obtain the materials for the, the water main piping? It seems to me that that's not off the shelf material. Um, the water main act is probably not too much too much of an issue because it's a it, we're calling for a common size. The drainage structures, uh, the concrete casting of the the drainage structures is what typically takes some time to get the shop drawings and then to fabricate them. I think we're looking at um, like a what couple months, three or four months. So we would want him to get started on that. Um, so could the I, I'm I'm thinking about how this um, relates to the residents. Mm -hmm. When does a shovel go into the ground? If it's three or four months for the for the catch basins, catch basins to to be formed and and supplied on site, does it make sense to be digging into the the streets in March? Correct. If they don't have the boxes on the li delivered, we're not gonna they're not gonna go out there and put their equipment out there. But yeah, we would we could look at what the time frame is for what they uh, anticipate the delivery, fabrication and delivery of the structures and and discuss with them, you know, we don't want you going out there and starting. I mean, there's other things they have to set up the silt fence and the, out, you know, outfall protection. And there's other items prior to those boxes getting there. But yeah, we can coordinate with a contractor to, um, delay the actual equipment starting in the field. The reason I ask, I, I think it's important that we have a town meeting, at least a core town meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to schedule that for January sometime uh, and, and invite any, anyone in the core to come <laughs> because they've been uh, here. There's a lot of rumors about the project. Mm -hmm. No one really knows what to expect, when to expect it. So mm -hmm. once you meet with the contractor and kind of firm up, your plans and their plans. Um, I'd like to have you at that meeting to answer Certainly. any questions. So typically, what we do is we get the uh, get the contractor his notice proceed and have him have one of his first shop drawings at the kickoff meeting is to have his schedule of construction prepared, and we review that and we make, we make comments. Then we have a, a pre-construction meeting. For the for the residents, uh, with the contractor there, and the actual woman would be there as well. Okay. And when when do you expect that would be? Um, I would think towards the end of January, if. Um, okay. So then we should be looking at end of January, maybe mm -hmm. early February. Yes. Know, the last those that two week period. Perhaps. Right. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Very good. We'll, we'll then, schedule that. And then lastly, just to sound simple, but or. So you have all these timelines and whatnot in the mixed work, but are we going to have, can we have some examples, which I know you've done before, Rebecca, where we have, you know, what the trenching looks like, what the the uh, the uh, steel plates go over the trenching at night and all that sort of stuff. Like, so, sure. that, so everybody knows what to expect. Other than yeah, just we can, looking you at know, photos stuff. or, and, yeah, and I mean, we'll I, talk about the, the records, yeah. right. So at the end, you know, at the end of the night or end of the day, the contract is required to, close up yep. you know everybody's driveway so everybody can get into their house if some they have to make sure that mail delivery the garbage pickup um any kind of say somebody needs to go to a daily doctor's appointment or weekly doctor's appointment or we the contractor and our our field people we work all we work through all those details house by house whatever whatever is needed and we make sure that people are inconvenienced to the least possible extent. So, yeah, we'll talk about all that sure. at that meeting. Yes. Great. Uh, one last question, Jackie, is this still, or, or Rebecca, is this, we're still looking at an 18 month okay. project? Right. Okay. So the goal here would be only to have, uh, to work through one season. Right. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Um, 
Any other questions of uh, Rebecca? Okay. okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Rebecca. All right. So we have that approval. We have the direction for Mr. Nazaro. Um, I think that's all we need right, right. at this it time. Is. It okay. is. Okay. Very good. Um, okay. Uh, let's move on to the final items of mayor and commissioners. I was going to uh, had mentioned earlier on that uh, the issue of massing is something that uh, we have been wrestling with for quite some time, and it's why I felt Tom Smith should go back to the ARPB. I'd, I'd like to send back to them a uh, direction from the commission to, to conduct an in-depth study of how massing can be addressed, uh, particularly in the, in the core area and, and its smaller lots. Comments? Um, where were we on the uh, the former uh, chief building official, planning and zoning director from the town of Palm Beach? Is that we've moved on from, from that sort of thing versus cube massing versus other alternatives? Are we swinging swing back to, to all that? He had indicated that he was really busy and, and didn't yeah. necessarily have a lot of time. Sure. I think that he was semi-retired, but then came on as a contractor and worked as much as he was when he yeah, was employed. He's still working for you. Know, so we, we will, as, as you were saying that, I was thinking, you know, can we get him to come by an ARPB meeting to do a presentation, something that is, you know, can kind of set the stage for what we really should be looking at. So we will try to have him come in and maybe just do a, a 101 as far as what his concerns are to sort of pinpoint that. But I don't know if that he'd be, um, if he'd had the time to do like a whole whole consultant, but we will. Second, do we have like a secondary uh, option? You know, cost notwithstanding, to sort of keep this moving. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, everyone in the ARPB is confident. They know what they're they're looking at. Tom's been on there a long time, but sort of, you know, where do you go? Yeah, we, I, I think a lot of the massing has to do. It's only my opinion with the architecture. I mean, you can have the same architecture, same percent. Um, FAR and have a bright looking house, or you can have a box house and make it look like twice the FAR. So I think the architectural style has to be addressed most. I, I, I'm inclined to uh, follow uh, Tom's advice. I agree with what you're saying, and I think there's good local knowledge. Uh, but the reality is, it's somewhat parochial, and we need to broaden our perspective and how other towns have dealt with things. So I think, you know, we should seek third party opinions. Oh, absolutely. Look, we used, well, well, originally we used a third party, we used a consultant mm -hmm. to do the architecture review. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's really important because I, you need a professional guide because most people don't know but there's yes. certainly more than one out there besides the gentleman. Right. Yeah, and, and, I mean, so. I'm sure there's somebody yeah. out there that has worked with us. Well, we still have a contractual relationship with UDKS. We so, do, yes. Yeah. So I don't know if they have Some the. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't. I mean, there's no one in their office that can do that kind of work right, right. now. Um, but I, I can reach out to our contact there and see if he has any suggestions. Um, I don't know how Coral Gables deals with massing, but I've worked with her, uh, with their um, one of their assistant attorneys on um, building design, some legislative issues previously. Um, so I don't know, you know, I'll reach out to her and see if they have any consultants or anyone they work I mean, with. We know we're trying to avoid uh, any additional complex formulas <laughs> to the extent possible. We know that that's. Well, the, the subject the, has been received negatively. Yeah, right? the, the cubic content yeah, yeah, is exactly right, for sure. Well, we've tiptoed around it. We've yeah. done a number of <clears throat> changes with and all in good faith and all to some effect. But it just seems to me that this needs to be really uh, comprehensively studied. And to the extent we need to bring someone in, um, the ARPB can make that recommendation for author, uh, authorization. Uh, staff can approve it. Um, up to, I think, what, $15,000. Right. So it's probably within in their bailiwick. They certainly have our uh, consent to do it. Um, so I want, I want to move forward, get that, get that taken care of so that we know once and for all what we can and cannot do in this, in this court uh, regarding massing. Uh, okay, anything, uh, any other comments? Mm -mm. 
Very good. Um, <laughs> it's my turn. Absolutely. Items, Absolutely. items by mayor and commissioners. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Sorry, a lot, lot's gone in my personal life. Um, I'm resigned. Effective um, tomorrow. Well, um, <clears throat> sorry for being emotional. <clears throat> I didn't want to be. Um, I've enjoyed working with the staff <clears throat> very much. Um, I've enjoyed working with chief, captain, all the officers. I've enjoyed um, working with everybody on the commission. Um, we've had good discussions. We haven't always agreed. Uh, there's always been uh, respect for others' opinions and respect for each other. Um, So it's been a very rewarding. And I thank you. Well, we we thank you. Um, you know, it's the respect, I think, that you mentioned, Paul, that differentiates Gulfstream from many other towns. Um, uh, the respect we have for each other, the, um, the, perhaps the similarity of views of, of, of personality. I don't really know what it is, but this commission has always just gotten along, not always agreed, but always gotten along and done it in a respectful fashion. You've been part of that. Um, uh, we have delegated to you a number of projects. Your, your financial acumen has been very helpful to the town, um, not the least in what we addressed today. Uh, so we will miss you here on the commission, but hope to uh, involve you further with the town um you have been a great member of this uh, of this commission the town owes you a debt of gratitude well thank you it's been an honor to serve this community so and mr mayor i, I just on behalf of the staff definitely myself i'm, I'm really going to miss our <laughs> conversations because we had some great ones and i really enjoyed uh earning your friendship uh, so I say I'm going to miss you, but I have a feeling I'm not going to miss you. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Meeting's closed.